Hello and welcome to this review of my Olivetti ANK27102 N keyboard. People have asked me what the best kind of normal rubber dome keyboard is that I have, and this is what I'm responding with. This guy very briefly showed up in my Dome with Slider Mega Review, but unlike all the other keyboards in that video, and unlike the few Dome with Slider boards I've done full reviews on in the past, this guy is just rubber domes. No sliders or any particularly tricky things, just a good old fashioned rubber dome done the right way. The chassis is a bit atypical as the barrels are separate units and they're kept to a metal backplate via a huge amount of rivets, somewhat like the Cherry MY mechanism, but apart from that, it's just rubber domes and membranes, basically. Olivetti are probably most well known for their old typewriters, but they also produced several models of keyboards with different types of switches. This particular one is from 1993 and it's one of their last types using just rubber domes. Before that they did use dome with slider switches as well and before that a type of plate spring switches generally referred to as Olivetti snap action. I got this one from the recycling center for 50 pence. It was a pretty decent deal but a much better one was another Olivetti I got on the same day, an Olivetti branded Cherry G81, also for 50 pence which used the old thick cherry PBT die sub caps, which are rare enough to begin with, but Olivetti's had special blue lettering as well. I eventually traded that one for my Nixdorf nuclear launch keyboard. While the Olivetti G81 might have had nicer keycaps, it was certainly not a board you'd get for the typing field because, as I've mentioned in two G81 reviews, Cherry MY is a fucking detestably awful switch, while this Olivetti actually has pretty nice rubber domes. Now the first thing that struck me is that the travel feels rather shallow, which you wouldn't expect just looking at the thing, but it's definitely the case. Using my digital calipers, I measured it to be about 3 milliliters, which is not super easy to measure with rubber domes, but it's around that, I'd say. More common switches have a travel of 3.5 to 4 millimeters by comparison. The second thing is that these are really tactile, much more so than typical rubber dome keyboards. More than Topra 55 gram switches even, it's pretty remarkable. Coupled with the short travel, that means it's impossible to not bottom out basically, but the rubber does make it land soft enough that it doesn't hurt your fingers. The only disadvantage of these is that the short travel and rubber domes do make you type on this thing relatively hard at first but after a while you begin to relax a bit more. It's not too bad really, especially for just a simple rubber dome system. I mean, let's be clear here, it doesn't hold a candle to a proper mechanical, but it's a big improvement over normal rubber dome keyboards, and it's better than some crappy mechanicals even. The sound is also very intriguing, it doesn't really sound like any other rubber dome board I've ever heard, or any mechanical for that matter. If anything, it sounds vaguely like a quiet, muffled typewriter. Pretty cool really. The keyboard is also quite well built at 1.3 kilos and with a metal plate, together with a rather taut build, this thing can take a few knocks for sure. As it happens, something has gone wrong with the tracers on this one. I mean, it, it still is a membrane keyboard after all, so I can't use it properly. But still, it's quite decent build quality overall. The case has a finned look at the back, and the styling includes a grey paint job and rather sharply angled lines everywhere. And it's made in Italy too, as you can see in the model sticker on the back. Fatto in Italia! It has a detachable cable with a terminal jack on one end and a PS2 plug at the other. And it can be tucked away in the four-part cable gutter at the back. It's got a rather weird design of flip-out feet at the back of, well, this thing, which looks a little bit like one of those sticks that you can use to spoon up honey. It's vaguely reminiscent of one of Cherry's designs. The other one is missing on this particular one. The keycaps are thick ABS with legends so sharp and nice that I mistook them for double shots at first, but they appear to be of a type of very nice rimless pad printing because there's no mold marks at the back. Even though the keyboard has seen a good deal of use, none of the letters have degraded in the slightest though, and they look so good they might as well be double shots. They have a very distinctive lettering that Olivetti used, and the text buttons in particular have very sharply angled lettering. There is also a unique type of slanting at the front. At first it's vertical, and then it's diagonal. Again, it gives the caps a very distinctive look. 
Overall, it's a pretty okay keyboard this. There are several dome with slider designs I prefer over this one, but as far as bare rubber domes go, this is possibly the best keyboard I've tried so far. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.